Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where it's another wonderful day here at Hino Kicho Park. Uh, my friend the duck is not going to make an appearance today because there are a couple of other ducks here at the park on the other side of the pond and she's over there socializing with them so I have to make my video uh, in a little bit of peace today or without her company. Uh, the subject of today's video is going to be another Yashica rangefinder camera and in this case it is probably the the least common of the Yashica rangefinder cameras. Uh, this particular one is the Yashica YF, which was produced in 1959 and was the second Yashica model uh, produced after Yashica acquired the Nika camera company the year before. Uh, the previous model, which I did a video about a couple of weeks ago, was the YE, and of course the YE was replaced by the YF. Uh, the YF is an interesting camera because it kind of combines uh, the Leica M series design and the earlier screw mount cameras. It features uh, a lot of, uh, I guess, the specifications that the earlier cameras or these two cameras had. Uh, in case of the, uh, the earlier screw mount cameras, it still features the uh, M39 mount, so you can attach any Leica screw mount lens to this camera or uh, those lenses in the same mount, which were made by a lot of other makers, like Say, uh, Konica produced them, Canon produced them, Nikon produced them, and even today they are produced by companies like Voigt Lander and Carl Zeiss. So, uh, a wonderful camera if you if you are really interested in the, the, the M39 mount where you have an assortment of these lenses. Uh, in other ways, it resembles the Leica M series as it has a door on the back which opens up just like the, the Leica M2, M3, M4 and such. And the film loading is similar, though uh, this camera does have a removable film spool like the earlier M3, so uh, I would say that loading this camera is pretty much just like uh, the M3. Not a lot of these cameras were produced, and I don't come across a, a lot of these here. They weren't an especially expensive camera back when they were produced, uh, mainly because I guess uh, uh, I guess Yashica was pretty much just clearing their stock of Nika parts and such and getting rid of all of the, the body shells and body castings and things like that so uh, these cameras were sold for no profit or possibly even a small loss just to move them out the door uh, but today they have uh, a fair amount uh, of value due to their scarcity. So let's go ahead and take a look at the features, controls and functions and how to use the Yashica YF. So we'll go ahead and start on the top of the camera here. And first thing we have here is the film rewind knob, which is similar to the earlier uh, uh, Leica and I guess uh, screw mount rangefinder cameras. And we have a little arrow here on the top, which tells you which way to turn it. And it pulls up to give you more leverage. Moving to the center here, we have a uh, shoe for mounting a flash gun. Uh, this camera, of course, does not have a uh, hot shoe for the flash, but it does have a PC sync socket located here on the back. So attaching a flash is quite easy. Uh, this is a really good benefit compared to some of the earlier Leica cameras where uh, some didn't come with any flash sync at all and others have them you know, added later on and located in various places around the body. I think this is a really good location to mount a, a flash PC sync socket. Uh, next to that we have the shutter speed dial and this is a very similar dial to what we find on other rangefinder cameras of the era. You have to lift it up and turn it to the different speeds and we have a system of two uh, shutter speed selector rings, the one on the top and the one on the front. These aren't unique only to rangefinder cameras. Pentax used these in their earlier SLR cameras and uh, it, it, for some people it's a little bit inconvenient switching between the two different modes for the shutter speeds but uh, for people who are familiar with, with photography it's not a big deal. Uh, it's a good system and uh, even though it uh, has two different dials and such, it's actually, I find this to be as reliable or more reliable than the combined uh, dial which encases all the speeds, which they, which were a little quirky in some cameras. Uh, I sometimes have difficulty with these and things like say the, the Canon P and Canon 7 where the, the slow speeds sometimes stick, but uh, uh, of course later on it wasn't an issue, but uh, this is a good, simple, reliable system and it's easy to use once you get used to it. 
Uh, next to that we have the release button for releasing the film winding mechanism so you can rewind the film. Uh, next to that we have the shutter release button which accepts a standard cable release. And it's kind of a very low profile shutter button which sits in a way where it's not easy to accidentally depress it. There's no shutter lock button on here but you really have to kind of find the button to press it down to operate it. Uh, next to that we have the film counter window. Then like some other cameras, uh, on this camera you have to reset uh, the counter manually so when you put film in there opening the, the door doesn't automatically just reset it back to the uh, zero setting. You kind of have to do that by turning this dial until you get to uh, I guess the, the red line here and then uh, you're good to go from there. On the back here we have the viewfinder window, a very simple uh, window which looks pretty much like the one that comes on the Canon 7. Cool thing we have here is this uh, film winding lever located on the back. It's out of the way, it, it doesn't easily get snagged on stuff, it's a, it's a really good design and uh, works quite well. It has this kind of rubber coating on it which makes it very easy to grip. This particular camera, the finish on the outside is really nice and uh, the rubber around here still looks uh, quite new and quite nice. It is very, the operation is very smooth and very mechanical and very fluid. It works really well. On the front of the camera we have the viewfinder window, the rangefinder window, and this camera which is kind of a uh, uh, has a feature which wasn't uh, very common on Japanese rangefinder cameras of 1959. Uh, this camera features projected frame lines uh, which project onto the prism on the side here. The only other camera this year which had this feature was the Nikon SP which was a significantly more uh, expensive camera. Canon, Canon hadn't come up with the design yet and uh, it wasn't available on the other makers either so a really wonderful wonderful feature which comes on the Ashiko YF despite its uh, rather low price back in those days. Uh, the frame lines, it has two frame lines uh, built in. It has a 50 millimeter frame lines with parallax correction which is a wonderful feature and an inner set of frame lines for a 100 millimeter lens. Uh, you can use the 35 millimeter lens with this camera you just have to use the full finder and it works quite well for that. Uh, I was looking at a Japanese site where uh, someone I guess a pro photographer here in Japan has been using one of these for say 30 years with a uh, Canon 35 millimeter f1.5 lens and it's his favorite shooting combination. Uh, he's done a lot of interesting work with it and, if, um, you know, and uh, the finder works just well just fine with the 35 millimeter lens. Uh, this particular lens is a 35mm f2.8 Yashinon lens. Uh, these are a very high quality lens and um, I, I, I talked about this lens in my previous video when I covered the uh, Yashika YE. There are a couple of variations of this lens. They look exactly the same but they are a little bit different. One has a wider focus barrel than the other and has a slightly lower profile but optically they are the same design and they have the same performance. Moving to the bottom of the camera to load the film, just like a Leica, you have to turn this dial here and pop off the cover. And an odd thing about this cover is this has the same sticker which comes on the Ashika YE which uh, shows you the measurements for trimming the film leader to load film into the camera. But like a Leica M3, it's not really necessary to do that with one of these cameras because the door pops open and you can kind of guide the film in with your fingers. We have a nice wide spot here which allows you to push the film down and kind of line it up. When you load the film you have to pop out this spool and you have to fit, of course fit the end of the leader into the spool and then turn it a little bit and then you lower the, the film cartridge and the spool at the same time and feed the film into this slot here. It's a little bit tricky but uh, once you have done it a few times it becomes quite easy to do and uh, compared to cameras of other formats and things like that it was actually quite easy to load these cameras uh, compared to those. Of course it's much easier today or in later years where they invented much better systems or easier systems for loading film. Uh, I kind of think like the, the Canon QL or quick loading system uh, it was the best of those but uh, yeah, the system on the Ashika YF works really well. We have a full range of shutter speeds here from 1 1,000th of a second which was kind of unique on a focal plane 
uh, shutter rangefinder camera <clears throat> uh, all the way down to one second which you get on the lower uh, lever here when you are selecting the speeds uh, we have the range of speeds here from uh, B60, 125, 250, 500, and 1000. And we have this uh, red one here, which uh, says uh, 30 and, uh, and I guess 30th of a second, and the other speeds here. So if you turn this all the way to the left, you get the flash sync speed, which is 1 30th of a second, and then you can select the lower speeds under that. So pretty straightforward and easy to use once you get used to it. So, anyway, uh, that's it for my video on the Yashica YF rangefinder camera. Uh, I'll have this one listed for sale in my stores maybe tomorrow or the next day when I have the time to do it. Uh, business has been pretty good recently. I've received a lot of orders and I've shipped out a lot of cameras. Uh, things have been a little bit slow recently with the shipping. Uh, I'm still uh, using UPS, which... Uh, Normally I'm not a big fan of UPS, or I say I've never been a fan of UPS, but due to uh, coronavirus, that's kind of the only option I have for international shipping now. Uh, we're hoping sometime after uh, the first of the year to uh, reserve, resume more flights for the post office. Um, the uh, Japan post office is much faster and more reliable than UPS, so I'm looking forward to getting back to using them. So uh, for those of you who ordered cameras, uh, it's taking anywhere from one to two weeks to arrive. So uh, please uh, bear with me when it comes to these things. It's not so bad uh, uh, when I'm ordering things from, say, uh, Europe or America. Uh, it tends to take longer than that. For example, if I order uh, shaving soap from my favorite place in the UK, it usually takes me maybe 20 to 25 days for it to arrive. Uh, and, if I'm ordering something from America and they're sending it out by priority mail, you know, sometimes a month or so it takes for a package to get here. So uh, UPS, though it's not as fast as I like, uh, at least it's not as slow as some of the other carriers. But anyway, uh, that's it for my video today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, uh, once again, I'll have this camera up for sale for shortly if you're interested in it. I'll be posting a couple more videos later on this week. If you'd like to see those, please come back or subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.